registry too. They play the scale is fine. Well, but when I get in the high register, well, I can't, and the low register. So, and then we realized it was from here to here. And if he just made a little modification, he could play it. And I said, I want you to trust it. Don't do anything. Now, play it. And one, it came out like this. And even after that, he couldn't believe it. I said, that will be more valuable than running scales for half an hour. It will change your physiology, how you play the instrument. And the easier it gets to play the instrument, are you a jazz player, classical player, both? Uh, more jazz. More jazz. So then you start to do this with changes. And we start to do this with the fingering that goes with the changes. And we, start, we take little spots that you have been managing inefficiently, like playing on changes, but I haven't heard you play yet. Are you great? Are you learning? Are you good? Where would you say? It's hard to judge yourself like... Well, can you give me a general level? Uh, I feel like I'm not great, but I'm good. Okay. So in other words, if you manage things well and it's a good day, and you have enough rest, or you feel comfortable with the people you're with, you play pretty good. Yeah. Right, so we take little bits of that, and we practice it until it unconsciously Everything that the body does to play that, you keep taking these little bits and you notice that your playing is just starting to act like that. There's some moments you're practicing absolute mastery, virtuosity, and the body remembers it. And it's like putting pieces of a puzzle together, you know, putting you, you know, this whole other efficient machine. And it's not just a flute playing machine, it's a changes machine. I'm a changes machine. You give me changes, it's not like on a good day or a bad day, you know, it's it's not if I have cold or if people, if I can trust the people around, you know, all that stuff, that's something you can do or you can't, I couldn't play well if I was nervous. That's never, that never explains at all because if you couldn't play well because you were nervous, then why did you play anything right? Because those things you know better, so it changes. <laughs> memory it's too much stuff but if you always have something you're working on muscle memory now let me walk it back that's the fourth step let me walk it back from there to be able to learn something of muscle memory you have to keep your mind out of the way so you wait for the body to learn to play it and once the body's learned to play it it's now muscle memory you don't have to think about it so how do you wait and stay out of the way the body you know now you walk back the steps that's what we're doing here today the, get the flute comes up here and you're never doing anything but what you're doing and if you keep staying out of the way, the armature will form in a way that's more natural than you were aware of. And you'll find that notes are better supported because if you don't take an inhale, you're not going to exhale. And then you forget about it and you go to play and suddenly you might notice more is happening with less effort. Okay, then the other part of playing jazz is the expertise of note selection over the changes. And that's practiced a little, instead of just blowing and being vague throughout course after course, you have your own track of practicing that is really shaping lines clearly, say a bar or two, and then learning to hit it from that same physical sensation. And that leaves impressions in the body, and you notice you're playing game better. It seems like it's not so hard to understand how a bad player gets okay, but it seems to be very vague as to how to get an okay player to play good, and how to get a good player to play great. And it has to do with this little, these little things. It doesn't have to do with big goals and big practice approaches. 